I'm wearing this little button on my coat this morning that says, I love Sunday school. Our Sunday school director put that on me a little while ago, and I accepted that with gladness because I was saved in Sunday school. And so that's special to me. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. 1 Corinthians 10, 17, and I want to ask you to stand to honor God's Word this morning, to express our thanks to God for His perfect Word. And look carefully at these words, and then we're going to turn over to the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter. But stay with me here for a moment. For we, though many, are one bread and one body, for we all partake of that one bread. Now, I want you to let that sink in today. Though many, we are one bread and one body, for we all partake of that one bread. This is the reason that on the Sundays we have the Lord's Supper that we bring our two services together. It is to remind us that we are one body. Can you say amen? amen. And we are one bread. Amen. You know, I've had the opportunity in my lifetime to travel to a lot of places, particularly in my younger years, around the world to preach. And I can remember standing in Africa in a little church made out of a thatch, had a thatch roof on it and a dirt floor. And they were singing their hearts out in the Swahili language. I could not understand the word they were saying. But my heart joined right in with them and praised the Lord Jesus Christ. And then... One Sunday night, I was in India in a Presbyterian church. There were a thousand people there, and we were singing. And I don't know what we were singing, but I was singing something too. And it didn't bother me a bit because my singing was different from their singing, and their singing was different from my singing. You see where I'm going? And then I can remember going to El Salvador one time and standing out in front of a market right across from a neighborhood. And there again, we were singing, and I could understand some of that. And we sang all these songs. And I want to say something to you while I've got the church together, both, both of our services together. And I want you to listen to me. And I'm talking to you as your pastor. I'm talking to you as your friend. I'm talking to you with a heart of love, but I want you to hear this. What we do in church on Sunday is not about the kind of music we sing. It's about the Jesus we worship. Amen. And we've got to get our minds on him and not get hung up on these worship wars. We can't do that. It's got to be about Jesus. And I believe you feel the same way I do. And so let's love each other and support each other and not say anything about each other except that it's good and we're all going to worship Jesus. Listen, if you don't like the kind of music in another service, just get over it. <laughs> just get over it. And I'm going to tell you why. If you don't like it down here, you're not going to like it in heaven because there are going to be a lot of different kinds of music in heaven but Jesus is going to be in heaven. Amen. And it's about Jesus. Can you all say amen? amen? Can you love each other? Amen. Now, I mean it from all my heart. And I'm talking to the, the blended service, and I'm talking to the contemporary service. We are one body, one bread. And our emphasis is not on the style of music we sing, but on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat. That's the first sermon. <clears throat> now I want you to turn over to the Gospel of John, chapter 6. John, chapter 6. And 
And look at verse 35. And Jesus said to them, read, it, read that next sentence with me. I am the bread of life. That's what I want you to think about. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. What did he mean by that when he said that? Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you that as your children, we can come together and place our focus on Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus, that we can celebrate as one body around your table that reminds us of, of the life that you gave for us on the cross and the blood that you shed. And Father, all we know to do in our hearts is just say thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. We thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood. We thank you, Jesus, for making a way for us to be forgiven, for us to be saved. And Jesus, as we take your supper today, we ask you to bring Holy Spirit conviction into our hearts. And we pray that you speak to us loud and clear, that we may know we've been in your presence, and that today we have heard from you. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a book that was written entitled, Christ in Your Shoes. And in that book, the author told the story about a woman named Camilla Makowski of Warsaw, Poland. When he first met her, she was in the Baptist church in Warsaw, and she was 90 years old. And she told him the story that during World War II, during the German occupation of Poland, Hitler had pushed a half a million people into a ghetto there in Poland where 40,000 people had lived. You can imagine that. And she said in the first month, 50,000 people died. Now, she was a Christian. And Mrs. Mikowski put an armband on with the Star of David on it. And she took a loaf of bread and a Bible. And every day she would go down into that ghetto and she would give out a Bible and a loaf of bread. She did it every day. She could have been killed for what she was doing. Over 100 people came to faith in Jesus Christ because of this dear Jewish woman who took the Bible and a loaf of bread to these people who were in such great need. She proclaimed Jesus as the bread of life. And Jesus is the bread of life. In fact, the Gospel of John contains the great I am sayings of Jesus Christ. There are eight of them. And the very first one is this one that we just looked at, where Jesus said, I am the bread of life. That's significant. He, because bread sustains life. Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer to pray for daily bread. He sustains our life. As we gather around this table, <coughs> today the bread is symbolic of the life he gave to us. In Jesus' day, just like in our day, the people were impressed <coughs> by what Jesus had done for them instead of what Jesus could do in them. Think about that. People today are just the same. They, they were not there to really follow him, but just to believe in his works and his power. That's why many of them turned away. And very few really followed him. The people wanted a sign. And in our day, people want a sign. But ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ is the sign. He is the sign. And he reminds us 
The same thing that he reminded the devil when he was tempted that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so today, the question of John 6, 28, that says, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? You see, they thought in terms of do, but Jesus emphasized the need for faith. He said, this is the work of God that we believe on him whom he hath sent. So I want to ask you today, what are you believing in? Are you believing in what Jesus can simply do, the miracles? Are you believing in the things that, that you want Jesus to do for you? Are you believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? The way to be saved is to believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. And yet so many emphasize the other. Bread sustains life. And this is what Jesus does for us. Our problem is that we have interpreted life materially when God interprets it spiritually. And there's a big difference between the two. I find that in the prodigal son. And isn't it interesting how he went off in search of life when everything he needed was in his father's house. So many times that's the way people are today. We must see life spiritually. And so, as we gather around this table, think with me today <coughs> about Jesus, the bread of life, and how we're to realize anew that he is our daily bread. And this will give us sustenance, and it will give us meaning to our life. And all of God's people said, Amen. <clears throat>
Have you ever been at work or maybe playing and you cut yourself and that red blood began to flow? I remember years ago on a Sunday afternoon, I was playing football and somebody hit me in the cheek pretty hard. And when I got up, I had a big split on my cheekbone. They took me over here to Fry Hospital. This was a long time ago. Dr. Fry was on call in the emergency room. You knew Dr. Fry, he was tough. And he said to me, well, boy, I don't think I'm going to use anything to numb it because you shouldn't have been out there playing football on the Lord's Day anyway. <laughs> now, he was kidding me, but he scared me to death. <laughs> but the blood just ran. And I thought about that. That's my blood. And when you hurt yourself, that's your blood. But on the cross, it was the blood of God. The blood of Jesus Christ was God's blood. It was pure. It was not tainted with sin. It was holy. And he shed that for you and me. I don't understand that. I can't get over it. I sure am thankful for it. Amen. Amen. Now, we're at the time in our service, which is a time of invitation. That's the most important time. It's like being in the birthing room at the hospital. Uh, it's like waiting for that baby to be born. Well, we're here as God's children, and we're waiting for people to be born again. It's an exciting time. And if you have not placed your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior, we invite you to do that, and here's what we do. We're going to stand in a minute together. We're going to sing a song together, and while we're singing this song, if you have not placed your faith in Jesus, we invite you just to step out and walk down here, and our pastors will be here to speak with you and open God's Word and show you in Scripture how you can invite Jesus Christ into your life. If you've not done that, I pray that you will. We all pray that you will. Amen, church? Amen. And please don't be embarrassed about uh, doing that today because all of us are for you. And we're rooting for you and we're praying for you that you'll receive Christ as your Savior. Then there's some of you who need to join the church today and we invite you to come. Just step out and come and make that commitment and let us be your church family. We would welcome you. We would love to have you. So as we stand and sing, you come this morning as God leads you to come. <laughs> 